What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a moment long awaited, I know by you and also by me. Because after a year of waiting, finally the NHT300 is here and we can get a close look at it and see what's what and see what could, could maybe be Sim, Sim's entry into the motorcycle market. I mean, proper entry into the motorcycle market. I know they have the 1 to 5 NHX and NHT and uh, the 200 NHT and in some markets the NHX. But I finally get to try out and uh, get a close look at the 300cc engine that Sim is planning to put on its bikes. So, I know you've all been waiting. I have been waiting as well, so let's get straight into it and see exactly what's what with the NHT 300. As we usually do, we're gonna start our overview of the bike right up front. We have the same 19 inch wheel that you have on the 200 and the 125. It's still a tube type tire. It's still wire spoke. So that's actually good for off-road and being a tube, you can actually air it down quite a lot. The same front fork with 37 millimeters of suspension travel on the back we have a monoshock but we'll get there we'll get there soon enough up front the fairing nothing has changed but honestly i don't think they should have changed anything because we have a full array of led lights daytime running lights high and low beam and indicators just like the all the other models of the nht the 300 is a full led bike so nothing halogen here we have, if we look here, we have our radiator, which seems to be the same radiator as the 200. So that might be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. We'll see. It's currently winter, so I can't uh, say for sure if the bike is going to overheat or not. But I'm pretty sure they've done their testing, so there shouldn't be any problems with overheating. Also, the 300cc engine is the same as in the cruise sim. And uh, it's really not an engine that produces all that much power and all that much heat. So it should be fine with the same size radiator. Up top, we have a very, very small windshield like on the normal NHT. You can also put all of the accessories that you could put on the previous models of NHT. They all work on the 300, the crash bars, the windshield, the hand guards, they all work just fine. In terms of braking, we see the same dual piston caliper up front on a 288 millimeter front brake disc, a single brake disc with ABS, front and rear ABS, Unfortunately, you cannot switch off the ABS, nor does it have off-road ABS. So it's just regular ABS. But if you really want to switch it off, you can just pull the fuse. It's right on the seat. It's not a biggie. Moving around to the side view, we get uh, our first glance at the engine. It's a water-cooled 278cc single-cylinder engine, putting out about 24 horsepower and 22 and a half newton meters of torque. That's quite a little bit more than the NHT 200 also in terms of power and in terms of torque and uh, we're actually going to feel that when we take it out for, the, for a ride. The transmission is the normal affair, 6-speed manual transmission with a normal clutch. You have the same footrests, you have the same exhaust but with a little bit of extra cladding, fairing, heat protection, name it what you want. Uh, the fuel tank, the fuel tank has not been enlarged, but uh, as far as I've been told, the fuel efficiency is still there. So about three, three and a half liters per 100 kilometers. So the fuel tank is still 11 liters. That should give us about 300 kilometers range. Good enough for this class of bike. The seat height also hasn't changed, 812 millimeters. It may seem like a tall seat, but it's actually quite narrow. So even short people can quite easily reach the ground. Plus it's not a heavy bike, around 150, 160 kilograms wet and ready to ride. It's actually a perfect bike for a beginner. We see the crash bars have changed. Actually the engine guards, not the crash bars. The engine guards have changed a little bit because the engine is a little bit bulkier being a bigger engine. We do have bulkier engine guards, so they can cover more of the engine. And especially on this side, they actually cover the water pump and the hoses. And I actually quite like to see that because in case it tumbles on its right side, if you break the water, water pump housing, you are stranded and you need a tow truck. So being protected, you're not going to have that issue. Moving around to the back, it's business as usual with the NHT. Again, full LED lights turn signals, number plate, uh, illuminator, brake light. We see the same rack that's on that's been on all the NHT Euro 5 models and I'm really happy to see that because if you want to mount a GV top case or a Kappa top case, they actually work perfectly on this 
on this rack. All the holes line up, so you don't need anything else. You just buy a top case and put it on, no problem. In terms of rear braking, again, ABS on the rear as well. A uh, single brake disc with a single piston caliper and a 222 millimeter brake disc. It's good enough. For this weight of bike, it's good enough. Now, if the engine would have been a 500, I would have said maybe the brakes need to be a little bit upgraded. But for a 300, the brakes are just fine. The rear wheel is the same 17 inch spoked tube, 130 millimeters wide. These CST ADV style tires, which actually work pretty well, even in off-road conditions, even in the rain, even on tarmac. I'm quite happy with tires. Normally, I'm not too happy with CST tires, but these are actually good. They're actually quite decent tires. They grip well. They give you a lot of feedback. They're decent tires, considering for stock tires, they're very good tires. Moving around to the dashboard is business as usual. If you're familiar with the NHT or the NHS, we have our full digital dash with the ref counter, with the speedometer, gear position indicator, odometer, voltmeter or clock, fuel indicator, and your idiot lights right here, which show you just about everything. The only thing that's not shown on the dash is the water temperature, but you do have a water light warning in case you overheat the engine. In terms of controls, again, business as usual, our kill switch, our hazards, our engine start button, our throttle, the same mirrors have carried on from all the other NHTs, our passing light on the right, high and low beam, indicators and our horn. Also, we do still get our USB quick charge capable port right here, right next to the handlebars where we mount our phone and also a regular starting key no keyless no fobs no nothing just a simple classic starting key that will always work also moving on to the left side what we can see is that the chain has been beefed up a little bit compared to the nht 200 and the 125 that's simply because the engine has quite a bit more torque so you need a stronger chain to handle all that all that torque we say we see the same engine guards bigger engine guards beefier engine guards on the left side also what i do want to point out is you can probably see this model of nht has just a side stand now that's not indicative of the final product this is the first unit we got in this is our test unit so uh let's just say somebody forgot to put uh, the center stand because this was a special order but fear not at least here in Romania and probably in a lot of other countries, the NHT 300 will come as standard with a side stand and the center stand. I know we here have discussed it and we're all gonna have, they're all gonna have center stands. Every single unit that we sell, they're gonna have center stands because you still have the same problem as the NHT 200 and 125. The bike will not turn on on its side stand. So if you wanna leave it idling to warm up before you go for a ride, you need a center stand. So. We're gonna, we're gonna offer every unit with a center stand. Now I know probably some people were expecting a little bit more from the NHT 300. Honestly, I wasn't. I got exactly what I thought I was getting because it's just an engine upgrade. It's nothing more. Sim didn't try to reinvent the wheel. The NHT is still a great little beginner bike for somebody looking into touring, adventuring. And uh, honestly, with this 300cc engine, it just gotten a lot better at touring and considering the price it's about 4000 euros and you put another thousand in it and uh, you can get your full equipment like crash bars hand guards windscreen top case side cases i would go for side cases with something not hard luggage but soft luggage because Honestly, the bike is quite small, it's quite narrow, so if you want to use it in the city, you better get some soft cases on the side. They work much better than full-on hard luggage boxes on the side. But like I was saying, 4,000 euros for a brand new 300cc motorcycle with 24 horsepower. Now, if you compare it to something like the Honda CRF 300 or 300 Rally, yeah, you're going to get a lot better suspension, but think about that thing costs about 7,000 euros. It's almost double the price of this. So if you're not into hard off-roading, enduro, stuff like that, just save 3,000 euros and you have money for, for trips, honestly. Just buy the bike, save the 3,000 euros, have money for trips. And then once you get used to the bike, once you get used to riding and you feel the need to go off-road further than you've ever gone before, 
maybe then you can upgrade to something like a 300 or 500 or something like a CRF or something with a lot more suspension travel and a lot more off-road capabilities. This thing can still do fire roads and pretty gnarly off-road if you actually push it. But the suspension does have its limitations. In terms of seating position, like I've said, it may be 812 millimeters, but because the bike is narrow, even me at 175 centimeters, as you can see, I can almost flat foot the bike and I'm not a tall rider. People of 165, 170 millimeters tall probably are gonna reach like this, but that's not a problem because the bike is so light, it's just a toy. But enough's enough. Let's ride the damn thing. Come on. Bloody finally getting to ride the NHT 300. Jesus, have I been waiting for this moment. Now, I've been excited about the bike ever since I saw it in photos, to be fair, at ICMA 2021. It's been a year since Sim announced it, and finally, after a year of waiting, I actually get to ride the damn thing. And what a bike it is, honestly. The NHT has always been quite a favorite of mine because it's such a light bike, it's such an easy bike, especially for somebody just starting out with riding. But now that it has a 300cc engine, honestly, it's, it's slow enough that you actually can put somebody who's just got the motorcycle license on it, but it's fast enough that it will keep them entertained for quite some time. Quite punchy, the engine. It, it's starting to feel like the NHT finally got the engine that is it deserves. Look, we're at 2000 RPM and I can just ride the torque without having to downshift. If you get up to the higher RPM, above 5000, it actually does start to come alive. <laughs> like there, we were just nudging 5000 RPM. But we, if we get on it, there it goes! And the suspension, as usual, on the NHT. It may not have a lot of a lot of travel, but it's actually quite supple. So it does handle the bumps. Now, again, don't go hard enduro because it will not handle like huge rocks taken at 50, 60 kilometers an hour while you're blasting down a mountain trail. Uh, but it will handle your fire roads. Like even here, it's quite broken, the surface, and it's handling it, no problem. It's so easy, it actually rewards the rider in a way that few bikes can, I mean, because it's so bloody easy, the thing is light, the, the thing is no heavier than the 125cc variant. Okay, sure, it may be just a little bit heavier, but not by much. I mean, like 5-10 kilograms, you can barely feel them. And with the added torque of the 300cc engine, you don't have to rev the nuts off it. Because it just so easily puts up with a rider's weight, the motorcycle's weight. In terms of braking, they're good, they're decent. I wouldn't say there's something to write home about. Uh, now this is a new bike so the front brake pads are just starting to get bedded in but I would like a little bit more feel from the lever probably after they get bedded in they'll be a little bit better but this braking system is the same as the NHT 200 and 125 so I know how they work they will stop you don't get me wrong they will stop you but they just don't have the immediacy of a twin rotor setup but considering the bike is so light and it's only 24 horsepower it's good enough honestly it's just good enough it's it's just so fun to like keep it at low rpm and just use the torque to blast you out of corners now 22 and a half newton meters of torque may not seem like much and considering it's uh, maximum torque is achieved at 7000 rpm so you may think like oh i have to rev it out but I would like to see a dyno chart of this engine because, okay, 22 and a half newton meters of torque at 7,000 RPM, so you have to rev it out a little bit to get maximum torque. But honestly, pedaling along at two, three thousand RPM, it feels like I have just about 90% of the torque on tap, which is 
quite awesome. Once again, sitting position is just as comfortable as, as any NHT. You sit bolt upright, the seat is very comfortable. Although it may, may not look it, but this bike can actually tour a lot. Marius, when we came back to Turkey, actually did an iron butt alongside me. So this bike in 200cc form is capable of an iron butt. So this 300cc, I have no questions that it is capable of an iron butt. Again on the bumps, you know, I want to try something because come on, it's an adventure bike. Again, with the added torque, you can easily just keep it in first gear, feather your clutch and just easily go. And just easily bounce over just about anything. And if you really want to go super slow, you can actually quite happily feather the, fl the clutch. And it's such an easy bike to maneuver. Especially if you don't have any curbs. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's such a fun bike. It's, it's so fun to take it on a bit of off-road because it's so goddamn light. It's unintimidating. It just, it's like a little goat. It just trundles along happily, just like a little goat. And after you're done off-roading, you can take back to the normal highway and head back home because it's quite comfortable and it will sit quite happily at 110, 120 kilometers all day long in sixth gear, just sipping fuel like a fuel-efficient little thing that it is. Is it perfect? Of course not. No bike is perfect. Come on. It all they all have flaws. Would have that would I would have I liked a little bit more tech? Sure. I mean this dash is pretty boring and pretty uninspiring. Uh, the handlebars again, they're fine. They're nothing to write home about, and the switch gear is fine. But again, for 4,000 euros a 300 cc bike. Show me something else for 4,000 euros at this level of power from a reputable brand that you know will stand behind its product, will honor its warranties, and it's probably not gonna break down, honestly. Sim has a pretty good reputation for reliability. Hell, my little Donnie has over 31,000 kilometers done in a year and a half without any sort of issues just regular maintenance and stuff like that <laughs> so nice to ride the wave of torque yep 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 this is the engine that the nht should have gotten a long time ago the gearbox is nice and slick. Honestly, it feels like a Honda gearbox. You barely feel the gears. You just feel a little click every time. The clutch is nice and light. You can easily feather the clutch. Either when you're off-roading or when you're in city traffic, you can easily feather the clutch. And that's what makes this thing so nice, especially for a beginner, because usually when you start out, you don't have money to buy 10 bikes, you don't have money to buy an off-road bike, a city bike, a touring bike, stuff like that. So you need one that can do it all. The engine is torquey enough through city traffic, torquey enough to go on dirt roads. The clutch is nice and light so you can feather it off-road with, with ease without getting your hand tired and also feather the clutch through traffic without getting your hand tired. It just all works together and for the price, it's, cool. it's a pretty unbeatable recipe. Uh, now I'm starting to like this little machine. ABS, as usual, kicks in to save the day when we overcook it. Come on. Woo! Well, like I've said, it's not going to set your pants on fire because honestly, it's... Uh, 
it's not all that much power but it's just enough where you can actually quite enjoy it and you don't have to bloody rev it out I mean I'm pulling along at between 2 and, two and 5,000 rpm it's where it's happiest in tight places like this this is where it's happiest so yeah has it been worth the wait absolutely it's been worth the wait it's an awesome little bike I'm glad the price is not been increased by a whole lot because 300 cc bikes usually start at 5,000 sim decided to price it at about four so I'm quite happy with that and uh, people who are looking for a little adventure bike a little starter bike that they can take on trips they can also use through the city this is an awesome machine in terms of vibration I can barely feel any sort of vibration so the engine is very nice and smooth again comfortable for long distance touring you can easily do hundreds of kilometers in the saddle with this just get a windscreen and some hand guards it will easily do four or five hundred kilometers a day in utter comfort without vibration without wearing you out so yeah cool little bike from sim I'm still waiting to see something I don't know 500 cc maybe put put the engine of the TL in the NHT and give me two two front rotors that would be awesome an NHT 500 maybe I don't know we'll see what 2023-2024 be, brings but I really hope sim starts producing and getting into the motorcycle market with some bigger engine bikes I I mean they're awesome they're small they're light they're cheap they're easy to maintain they're they don't cost a lot to service or to repair if you bin it come on let's get uh, let's get some bigger options in the showroom come on sim i know you can do it put the tl engine in something like the nht or the nhx because i'm loving where this thing is going <laughs> anyway but that's it for the nht 300 guys hope you all enjoyed it hope you liked the videos and uh, thank you all for the support and don't forget follow me on instagram join the channel if uh, you want to support this channel even more but liking the videos and watching them is enough for me but until next time take care everyone and ride safe goodbye <laughs>